Madison College Libraries presents a short introduction to Prowl. Whenever you're seeking information, you will have to make decisions about whether or not your sources are worth consulting, especially for academic work. You will need a way to measure each source's credibility, accuracy, and timeliness. As you have experienced, search results can be overwhelming, and not just because there are so many. This can be true both on the web and when using library databases. As librarians who have used several different strategies for identifying the best sources for research, we have developed a method of evaluation that we think is better suited for most students' research assignments. We named it Prowl. The P in Prowl stands for pause. In essence, you want to slow down before you decide to include a website, a quote, an image, a chart, a statistic, or an article as a source. In our method, R represents retrace. If you found a quote in an article or on a website, or if you discovered some data mentioned in a report you found online, examine the original source. What was the context of the information that was shared? Did the source you found in your original search represent the information faithfully, fairly, and accurately? If not, you should consider other sources. Observe is the next step. In this case, what can you learn about the author or organization that offers the sources you are considering? Do the author or authors have relevant credentials, such as medical training or advanced degrees in the field that they are writing about? Is the organization reputable, or are they pushing a partisan agenda or trying to profit from items on the website or from ads that run along with the content? Further, and perhaps most important, is the information provided supported by credible evidence, and do they make the evidence clear and easily available? The W addresses our question words. So besides who, mostly addressed above, ask, what are they arguing? When was it published and is that current enough? Where did they find the information that they're sharing with you? And why are they offering this information? Do they have an agenda they're trying to promote or is this offered primarily to teach and inform the reader? And finally, the L stands for look. In this case, you want to look beyond the source in front of you. Are there other sources on that topic that are more trusted, more in-depth, or that confirm, complement, or even refute what you are reading? The temptation with most assignments is to reach top speed, really race through your research, get it done as quickly as possible. Nevertheless, once you begin discovering promising source material, first pause to confront your own biases. For example, did you select the article because it fits with what you are hoping to find? The trouble with that is, it's not really research. In fact, that sort of shopping for information is known as confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is the tendency of people's minds to seek out information that supports the views they already hold. It also leads people to interpret evidence in ways that support their pre-existing beliefs, expectations, or hypotheses. Essentially, don't select a source because it fits with what you hope is true. Select sources that fairly use the factual information available. Retrace is a bit like a background check of your source. Does the source you're using faithfully use the information, and does it match the context used in the original source? Be careful with data that has been shared and try to determine if an expert quote or opinion has been misrepresented or misinterpreted. Having a variety of sources sometimes helps you avoid gaps in understanding. The passage in this book by Robert Kennedy Jr. claims that Dr. Peter Hotez called for laws in the wake of backlash against public health officials that would punish critics of those like Dr. Anthony Fauci. A quick check of the facts, however, makes it clear that he was calling for protection against threats of violence against public health officers and their families. Just make sure quotes and data fit whatever conclusions are drawn. There is also the possibility that information, images, or videos have been manipulated by AI, artificial intelligence, so stay attuned to that possibility. As you come to know more about your topic, it will be easier to decipher truth from fiction. Take the time to observe. Who says so? Here, we have an article by Sierra Nugent, they might be a fine journalist, but we have no information that explains who that is. For casual reading, that's completely fine, but for academic research, you can and should be more selective. 
Here is another article that addresses tourism, but in a different context. It's clear from the start who John Connell is, an expert in a related field. You should also observe anything you can about whatever organization or publication offers the information. In this case, it is the Journal of International Trade and Economic Development, and more information about the source is available when you use the library databases or if you do some digging on the web. Verify that your sources present credible evidence. And especially if your source is a web page, discover what you can about the organization that presents it. Observe whether or not its mission is likely to produce biased information on your topic. Take a couple of minutes and review the five W's, a strategy journalists use in vetting their sources. Besides who, which we've mostly addressed above, what are they arguing or pointing out? When was it published and is it current enough? And where did they find their sources? Finally, why did they write it? For what purpose? From what you read, the Pew Research Center publishes excellent nonpartisan, nonprofit research. In the case of this report, however, unless you are specifically writing about public opinion in 2006, it's going to be too old to be of much use. Why something is published is also incredibly important. Much of what you find online is designed primarily as entertainment. Whereas academic writing is designed to teach and inform, like the article found in this journal on marketing research. Finally, look suggests that you look beyond your current source. It's called research because you often have to rework your searches for sources and examine new ways of considering your topic. As you come across a new potential source, open a new browser tab and discover what you can about it. In a study by the Stanford University Education History Group, successful researchers were those who opened new browser tabs and searched about that source. Whether they were professors or undergraduate students, they did far better than those who examined solely what a website claims about itself. Depending on your assignment, consider a wide range of source options, including books, videos, trustworthy websites, articles, and scholarly publications. And one final reminder to keep an open mind. Try not to decide what is true until you look at the research that has been done on your topic. Good luck and happy prowling.